So uh, my talk will kind of expand on uh, what Leticia talked about and using Mitch's and Retta's data as kind of the basis for it. And when I talk about the economic evaluation of targeted grazing, we're talking about the Derek Bailey model of using low, <laughs> low moisture block and, and, uh, and herding to, to, to try and keep them in a particular area. So my objectives are to estimate the cost using targeted cattle grazing with low stress herding and supplements. And then the other thing I want to try and do is talk for a minute about why a benefit cost assessment is nearly impossible. And that would apply not only to this situation of analyzing the economics of, of using target grazing for, to reduce fire risk, but in valuing all these ecosystem services that we're all yakking about so much anymore, it applies to that area as well. And I'll also talk about the keys to making it work, and by it I mean uh, targeted cattle grazing uh, uh, effectively work. So let's review what the Arizona and New Mexico targeted grazing trials found, and I'm talking here what Mitch and Reddit talked about. They were successful in enticing cattle to occupy targeted areas, and Mitch emphasized that you got to use dormant period grazing to do that, and they were effectively did it in unfenced areas. They reduced the standing crop by about 24 pounds per day, as, as Leticia talked about. If you think about that, that's what you'd expect, right? That's about a, what an AUM, an 800-pound AUM is worth. So if you can get these cattle herded off someplace and get them to stay there, they'll eat about what a cow eats and, and reduce your uh, herbaceous material by that much. In the studies, they reduced uh, fuel loads by six, 700 pounds per acre and reduced the stubble heights from six to 14 inches and Leticia pointed out there were differences in the two studies in terms of the stubble height reduction. What the fire model found was that it would alter fire behavior, reduce flame lengths between that critical level that Leticia talked about of four feet where firefighting costs are actually increased because you have to move to more expensive fire uh, fighting techniques. It reduced the rate of spread by greater than 30 percent. It reduced the fire intensity and it reduced the area burned, if you remember the, that line with the red lines that she showed by, by more than a mile. In those, both the Arizona and the, and the New Mexico study, they started with about 1,300 pounds per acre of fine fuels. It's pretty hard to find an area with 1,300 pounds of fuel in, in New Mexico, but so we're talking about a pretty productive site that's grass dominated. And if you desired less, to reduce, keep flame lengths less than four feet in length, then what the fire model shows is you're going to have to reduce your fine fuels by perhaps as much as seven, eight hundred pounds of fuel. And that reduction may not be effective with cattle grazing. As Mitch, what they found in the studies was that at the, near the end of the study, when the cows had reduced by five, seven hundred pounds, they stayed in the target area much less. They were much more willing to go and eat the supplement and then start going elsewhere. So as you, you might be pushing the limit of, of uh, the level of forage that you need to reduce to make much difference in the fire. So the economics of targeting, what would targeted grazing treatment cost and was it worth it? So for this part of the analysis, Leticia built uh, three different scenarios with a little input from me. One was looking at the scenario where you're going to move to an urban interface with no fencing, and you're going to use low stress herding and supplements to entice them to stay in that area. The second alternative looked at where you're going to use electric fencing to hold your animals in. And the third scenario would be looking at using target grazing within the allotment or on the ranch itself. I want to talk for a minute about a study that was, a sheep grazing study that was done out of Carson City, Nevada to show you kind of what we're talking about. This was done by Ed Smith and other researchers at University of Nevada, Reno. Can't you recognize that study? And they used sheep to, to build a buffer zone above Carson City, Nevada. You see this zone right there? And so we'd be talking about trying to use targeted grazing maybe to just reduce the fine fuels on an area like that, that area. And with cattle grazing, it'd be kind of tough to get them to actually graze a swath like that the way they did with the sheep. Looking at the cost of the alternative fuel treatments, it was summarized by in a Rangelands article by Nader, where they talked about that Carson City study, and they estimated that herbicide treatments cost from 25 to 
$250 an acre. Of course, herbicide treatments are going to vary a lot depending on what you're trying to control and so forth. And maybe not be that effective where you're talking about a grass dominated site only. Might be trying to actually kill more brush and so forth if you're going to use herbicide. Mowing, you could go out there and, and mow it off for $25 to $40 an acre. One of the things they pointed out there is a limitation that you're liable to start fires with your mower as you're clunking on rocks and beating around. Of course, the slope's going to be important too there. Prescribed fire, you ought to be able to do that for less than $150 an acre. Goat grazing, $60 to $70 an acre. And sheep grazing, the cost of that Carson City fire was about, or grazing treatment was about $300 per acre with sheep. Last week or earlier this month, I had the, the pleasure of talking with and hearing this talk by a person named Dan Macon who's with the Flying Mule Farm in, in the Sierra foothills of California at a conference out in California. He's in the business of doing this uh, prescribed targeted grazing with sheep and goats in California and uh, does a lot of these fire treatments with goats and sheep. He estimates that the cost would be about $300 per acre plus transportation of his goats and sheep to the area if you're talking about less than 20 acres treatment greater than 20 acres and about $150 to $200 an acre. And it compares that to the cost of herbicides of $300 to $350 an acre and hand crews of $350 to $600 per acre. I think I would not agree with him that you're gonna have to apply these herbicide treatments every year. But what we heard earlier, there's this targeted grazing treatment probably is something you would have to do nearly every year. Of course, his big concern is Dan Macon was predators, neighborhood issues, and access. So the scenario one assumption, we're going to graze a target area to 160 acres near an urban center, urban center, 50 miles from ranch with 144 head of livestock. And we, in the analysis, we're going to assume that the 144 head stays the same. And if you want to take off more forage, you're going to have to increase the number of days that you're grazing the area. Two herders at six hours per day, feeding them about 1.1 pounds of supplement per day at 40 cents per pound. Assume that water is available, and that's a big assumption there. If water isn't available, that could add substantially to the cost of the treatment. And in this scenario, no electric fencing is required. Scenario two changes that to where now you're going to put up an electric fence to hold your animals in the area. You're not going to feed any supplement and reduce the number of herders by, by one, or the number of herding costs go down a little bit. The third scenario considers implementing targeted grazing on the ranch. So you're not going to tr truck them 50 miles from the ranch anymore, reduce the number of herding hours, uh, feed the same amount of supplement, not going to require any fence. So you're in within an allotment or within a targeted area. I want to point out that this kind of a treatment, <clears throat> this scenario might apply to something different than fire prevention or fire hazard reduction. Like Gary talked about earlier this morning, you might, you'd, you might just want to have an area ungrazed or you have an area in the allotment that's not grazed very much and you want to increase grazing on that area. You want to keep them out of riparian areas. Maybe you've got a burned area that you're trying to keep them off of. And you could use this kind of a targeted grazing treatment to entice them to a different area on the allotment, within the allotment. If you wanted to reduce the uh, herbaceous reduction by 500 pounds per acre, then under scenario one, it cost about $44 per acre. Scenario two, $55 per acre where you had fencing, and within the allotment, about $22 per acre. If you wanted to get down to where you're trying to remove about 800 pounds per acre, it'd be almost a toss up between just building a fence to keep them in or trying to use that supplement and herding to get, to get them to that area because of the difference in labor time and hours and so forth. After my discussion with Dan Macon, who does this for a living, and I think that's the next step of this targeted cattle grazing area is to actually try and implement it in an urban kind of an interface area, kind of like that Carson City sheep grazing. There's a lot to be learned about how much those hassle costs are going to be important. But clearly, if you're going to do this on a contract basis, which you're going to have to generally do, the labor cost might have to be increased. Here is another scenario where we consider $22 per hour for labor, which would be more reasonable for a contract grazing. That would 
indicate with the uh, assumptions we made that you might be about as well off of just building a fence around the perimeter electric fence to keep them in and and use a little less labor to do it. Depends upon the relative value of labor. <laughs> Am I doing okay on time, Derry? I want to talk for a minute about our initial ambition was to do a benefit cost assessment. So far, I've talked about the cost of doing a treatment like this. But I want to point out the problems in trying to estimate the benefits. So you spend $50 to $300 per acre to implement a targeted grazing treatment to reduce fine fuels. You expect to have a less intense fire, create a fire break, reduce the probability of structural losses, reduce firefighting costs. And of course, there's grazing benefits of getting them to graze that area. But if you're going to convert that to economics, we have to estimate how that altered fire risk probability, how the structural losses from fire are potentially reduced, and the probability of that occurring, and the probability of realizing those changes in structural loss, how fire suppression costs change. So it's a very complex risk assessment. And only with some of these fire models, and I'm interested to hear tomorrow's discussion about these fire models, do you have any potential of ever estimating how those benefits would be derived. <coughs> So it's a real complex deal to estimate the benefits of a lot of these ecosystem services, and this is a good example of, of where it's nearly impossible to do that. So the keys to targeted grazing success, as Mitch had pointed out, is dormant season treatment. It needs to be on a grass-dominated site, or you could chop off the woody plants, then use grazing as Rachel talked about, real need if you have a shrub grass kind of a site to use a combination of treatments where you get rid of the shrubs in some other way and then maybe use targeted grazing to maintain that, uh, that site. Water needs to be available. And as Ed Smith pointed out to me in the Carson City study, some of the firefighting agencies have the best water trucks in town and you have a lot of potential to cooperate with them to, to provide water when you don't have. But Unfenced target cattle grazing may not be capable of creating a fire break like that one on the hill above Carson City because it's just trying to get them to stay there until they actually got it grazed to the ground. One of the interesting things when we started this after proposal and, and Derek put out a news release was concerned it was just another reason to, to graze and overgraze on public land. And so there's always that perception that you've got to be careful of. So there's lots of pot potential problems. Nobody's going to do this for free. A payment's going to be required to do it. There are many potential problems, including domestic dogs and stray animals, livestock water availability, neighborhood issues, social acceptance and information. I know that Ed had pointed out that in the Carson City study, it was really important to get out and let people know why there were sheep on the mountain and to point out and, and question them about their acceptance of that, and that would be another important part. <clears throat> Animal performance is obviously going to be impacted as you graze these areas that are not your standard grazing areas. And as Dan Macon pointed out to me, there's a substantial hassle cost with his sheep grazing alternative, and there would be with cattle too as you move into an urban area. And a lot of that sure needs to be explored with another study where you actually try and implement it in that way. Any questions you have? Yeah. We used NRCS estimates of fencing costs, which depreciates that fence out over time. So we didn't use the whole cut because you are going to reuse the fence in different this study and that study or this and that was considered kind of by using depreciated cost of the fence. Roy? No, the in insurance industry is doing a lot of work on this area, though. I mean, there's potential that they may actually give people who who have well-protected residences a, a break on their fire insurance. And that's one. I think the fire insurance industry is probably one of the leading industries that will come forward in terms of helping to analyze a lot of this stuff. 
if you really want to get a handle on what the value of reduced fire danger is, I think the, a market like that is where you'll come up with what that value really is.